Thank you, Prakar, for the introduction. Uh, so, good morning, everyone. Uh, so, I hope everything uh, is going okay. You guys are healthy uh, and uh, doing good. So, uh, yeah, as uh, Prakar gave the introduction about my profile. Uh, so, in this presentation or in this, uh, you know, the interaction, I will not be taking you people to the, you know, the derivations. What are the theories? Uh, what are the formulas and all those things? No complex, nothing. It's very simple. Uh, what are the laws or what is the physics behind what we study in a college or or during our you know the uh, the projects? And then a bridge. How can we connect uh, with the you know uh, the studies which is going on in into the industry? And then what exactly we do in industry? What what is you know what is the work? How development phase goes and uh, how you know uh, the aerodynamic and aer thermal simulation helps to develop a vehicle so very quick uh, introduction about uh, my profile currently i'm working in fca which is in chennai uh, almost one and a half year uh, before that i was in esi software uh, the main responsibility was basically to provide the solution aerodynamic solution to the customer because they were uh, making they were manufacturing or uh, what you say is developing their own softwares for aerodynamic simulations uh, then during my mtech i was a project assistant in isc bangalore also i completed my thesis there and i was a testing engineer uh, with the hindustan motors after my btech so uh, and and then my uh, masters and uh, graduate and postgraduate from the same college uh, university of petroleum and energy studies so if uh, in a brief or outline say i have experience of uh, the field uh, how we test the vehicle into the field and then how we switch into the simulation so that basically uh, gives you a 360 view of how uh, automobile or how a car works, what are the parameters, what we test, and uh, what are the things. Okay, so the quick view about the introduction of the topic is uh, we cannot go into the details of this because it's, it's I mean, the definitions and all is very much uh, available on the internet. So we don't have to go into the deeper of just for the definition. So basically, yeah. Aerodynamic is uh, when we where we study the interaction of fluid with, with the moving vehicle. Uh, we see how you know it is uh, affecting the vehicle. What is the physics? Uh, what is the uh, impact of this interaction? What are the pros? What are the cons? Uh, how you know uh, how good vehicle can be developed or what are the effects? Now the aerothermal basically. What happened in in our car? We know very well that uh, there is an engine and there is exhaust system. So engine typically runs at uh, the outer temperature of outer surface temperature of engine is somewhere approximately uh, 130 to 140. Uh, but the exhaust temperature they vary a lot, a lot. Uh, they can go up to uh, 800 to 1000 degree centigrade. So we know uh, there are a lot of components near the engine, near the exhaust. Exhaust goes all with the way from the underhood to you know uh, the underbody and then finally leave the exhaust gases so the main purpose of aerothermal study is what are the components uh, because there are a lot of components in underhood underbody uh, so because of this heat because of this high temperature what is the effect of this temperature on these components if uh, you know the temperature of a particular component is going high we use plastic also we use metal also we use rubber also so uh, we check uh, uh, if you know it is touching a part which is uh, going into the danger zone kind of like the melting zone long term uh, run might affect it so these kind of things so what is the effect of that temperature on you know uh, the particular components or nearby components so in total, if we combine the aerothermal and aerodynamic study, because both are uh, related to the fluid movement of fluid. So we combine this and we call it aerothermal studies. So the main purpose of my job, you can say, or the profile is to, you know, get the aerodynamic and aerothermal simulation. So we'll go through this A quick. Uh, what we are going to see now or what we are going to talk about is, first of all, what we'll go through the very basic very simple laws what are the uh, laws which are involved into the aerodynamic or uh, uh, you know uh, the aerothermal simulations and we'll try to again the bridge 
uh, with the, what is the reality, how we get uh, the things over there. Uh, and then we'll go to the deep dive where I'll be taking you to the core part of, uh, you know, how industry works, what are the things we consider before uh, before, in fact, the development of vital when it is in concept phase, and then uh, some of the examples, some of the very uh, typical examples of industry, how we use CFD softwares. So, in this presentation, I'm not going into the detail of CFD because CFD itself is a very big field. I'm not going to uh, 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 tell you guys like how to set up a case in CFD or what is the importance of CFD. This uh, presentation is basically about what is the importance of virtual simulations and how we correlate with the, how we use these tools or how we use this study for the production of vehicle. So yeah, what we know first is everyone is very well aware of this conversion diversion nozzle. I'm not going into the detail of this again. So now if simply I say if the pressure at point B is lower than pressure point A, so the fluid motion will be governed from point A to B, which will be, you know, basically the pressure difference higher to lower. This is very basic, uh, sorry, basic uh, theorem or basic uh, law, which we call as uh, Bernoulli's principle. For, from this presentation or from this slide, we just have to remember that the flow is governed by the, the pressure difference. And of, of course, this uh, particular figure also, because it's going to play an important role into this. Next is, the boundary layer theory. This is very, very, very important in for the aerothermal and aerodynamic simulation. So uh, if we talk about this uh, particular figure and uh, uh, let me take you to there. Okay, so if this is the surface, this is the surface on which the fluid is flowing here. So now if we talk about this point or because uh, the fluid, you know, contains it, uh, the viscous property, uh, uh, the fluid is not in viscid we know, and the surfaces, the real surfaces, uh, they're rough, they're not perfectly smooth. So when the fluid actually interacts with the surface, it gets stuck or it sticks on the surface. If you go on the microscopic level, you will find that there is a friction or the surface irregularities, which is actually holding the fluid back. So if uh, we go into the details and uh, so the fluid on the uh, the surface which is just adjacent which is sticking the velocity of the fluid will be zero because of the friction because it is sticking on the surface which is happening over there and as we go away from the surface we will see because that effect will be less now it is not now the wall is or the surface is not resting so the layers are uh, the the adjacent layers they are moving along so the we will see the velocity profile it will be something like this so the velocity here would be the zero and as we go uh, from surface to the top it will vary it will start varying and finally it will meet to the free stream so this is what uh, is called a no slip condition when the fluid it has a viscous property when is when it is uh, flowing over a surface. So basically this is governed by Newton's law of viscosity, which is, uh, you know, your uh, velocity profile or your, uh, the, the shear stress between the layers is directly proportional to the, uh, sorry. Okay, your shear stress is uh, proportional to the, the velocity gradient of uh, now this. Now, what if we, try to introduce uh, the surface is hot. What if, what will happen if the surface is hot? So we know very well, it's like, uh, it's it's very logical that uh, the fluid will try to sweep the heat from the surface. It will try to cool down and the fluid temperature of fluid is normal ambient temperature. So what what is happening now, we know very well that the heat transfer takes place with the three, you know, uh, laws, uh, convection, conduction, and radiation. But in this case, the convection is very much heavy. Uh, the conduction, uh, convection is playing a very high role or very important role is in this because the fluid is taking away or the sweeping away all the heat from the surface. It will try to cool down the surface. So this is what when we combine, when we can actually combine the flow and thermal boundary layers. So the thermal boundary layer or the thermal profile is also uh, looks the same, but it's not exactly like this. So. Uh, from this uh, slide, we, we take that uh, uh, the aerodynamic simulations, whatever are there, uh, uh, when the fluid is flowing on the surface, there is a friction, there is a boundary layer generation. And when the heat is involved into that, there is another boundary layer generation, which is because of the heat also. 
so these are the these were the two basic laws which uh, there are other also but uh, these are the main uh, two on which we can analyze uh, you know the aerodynamics or aerothermal simulations so now we'll try to correlate uh, how it can uh, you know uh, affect the automobile so basically again if we see there is a venturi meter uh, sorry convergent divergent nozzle and if we see uh, the curvature of the outer surface of the the automobile is uh, uh, again i need okay okay so now if we try to see the curvature what is taking is like this and this surface act as a wall because obviously the fluid cannot penetrate uh, you know the the uh, the convergent uh, the nozzles uh, so the fluid is going from flowing from uh, point uh, this point to this point so now this is this is how i uh, try to correlate the physics there are other ways also but uh, this is very uh, you know the simple way of if you try to connect with uh, how you know the flow over automobile or the flow over uh, car happens if you remember the first slide the introduction slide there was a uh, wind tunnel experiment where you were seeing the the velocity streams or streamlines uh, were going over automobile this is exactly the very similar now what if i just try to you know uh, uh, simplify or cut down this volume as per my requirement the upper volume can be neglected so now if we see uh, how you know the flow lines or the streamlines will be traveling on the automobile now yeah so if we try to connect now with the boundary layer theory uh, so each and every part of uh, a car each and every part of car which is exposed to the air or the fluid will experience the same kind of boundary condition which we have uh, explained in the previous slide each and every part in fact the tire uh, the hood uh, the surface the lid each and every part which is exposed which is open to the air uh, will you know uh, the it will it will uh, it will uh, have a boundary condition like this throughout the vehicle now let's go little bit detail into the aerodynamics uh, or aerothermal part so basically yeah, uh, we try to you know correlate the interaction of uh, the moving vehicle with the fluid and uh, uh, in terms of uh, velocity pressure and temperature they are the major uh, representative of uh, the physics representatives of the physics basically so drag is basically a force which you uh, which we can say it try to restrict the motion of fluid because uh, in ambient air uh, 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 there is a friction between the layers of air which we cannot uh, experience much uh, but uh, when the automobile or a car is traveling at high speed it can experience because there is friction there is a viscous property of fluid so basically the drag is a kind of restriction which which is not allowing uh, the motion of uh, car into that flow separation because uh, the flow separation is uh, when uh, obviously when uh, your vehicle is moving so there is an interaction between the fluid and the automobile and when it is leaving so the fluid will again come into the rest or we are basically we can say uh, in the atmosphere the fluid particles are distributed if we are traveling in a car or if we are driving a car we are actually creating a disturbance into the ambient so that disturbance it need to settle down after some time uh, so uh, the the body or the car will interact with to uh, with the with the fluid particles and after that when the interaction is done so it will come into the rest uh, now the stability yeah, obviously the stability of vehicle is very much uh, required uh, uh because when we are traveling at high speed we want our car to be stick on the road instead of uh, you know uh, it should not leave the road uh, that is the only thing uh, we required so uh, but at traveling at high speed requires more stability uh, and then the force convection force convection obviously because uh, you have your under hood uh, body parts and uh, under body uh, body parts uh, under body parts uh, they are going to you know get cooled down with the force convection only because the air uh, is going to interact with those parts and it is going to sweep away all the uh, all the heat so if you try to correlate these kind of physics or these kind of things what is the impact so drag is basically directly proportional to your fuel consumption because uh, that's a restriction and you have to overcome to that restriction uh, 
uh, flow separation uh, could be because of various reasons and that creates basically a wind noise which is called uh, nvh if you sit inside the car uh, even though your car is you know you are totally your uh, all the wind screens or your side mirrors are up but still you will hear some voice that is uh, that is a reason of uh, the viscous forces in the fluid and the flow separation stability yes we re we required a lot especially for the high end cases uh, for high end cars and then the force convection i have explained to cool down all the uh, parts now the caution is uh, the aerodynamic forces uh, basically they don't uh, they are not very active on the low speed so uh, basically it's it goes more uh, applicable or you can consider after going like uh, approximately for indian cars it's like 60 km per hour after we can only consider or it plays a major role in that now the aerodynamic force force i'm not going to into the detail of uh, this you formula uh, this is very much available everywhere so yeah this is how but but the main reason why i uh, popped up this formula is uh, the aerodynamic forces obviously they are related to some of the property uh, of the air or the fluid so if we see here in the formula uh, the cd is basically a proportionate constant which uh, you know tell the uh, tell a number which on which we can judge uh, how aerodynamic how good aerodynamic uh, or how good aerodynamic property of a vehicle is a is the area so uh, area that matters a lot because uh, the fluid is directly exposed to the surface uh, the fluid is directly exposed to the ambient so uh, the area when we choose area is a very important component in terms of automobile uh, there is a con uh, convention how we take is basically we take the orthogonal section or orthogonal projection of a vehicle if you want to see if you want to understand how this works just uh, go and uh, uh, go and sit uh, go and uh, stand in front of the car so whatever you see in this uh, in this uh, figure or in this image what you can see is just that is considered as a frontal area it plays a major role into that now if you uh, want to understand how it plays a major role you see a sedan or a small you know uh, the hatchback car and then you see the trucks obviously the drag for the trucks will be higher and then the density density obviously it matters a lot a lot uh, because uh, when the density varies the restriction on the fluid will uh, of the fluid will increase so the more force you need actually if you change this density from air to the water you can understand uh, you know how much force it is uh, going to experience or we can say basically uh, when you are interacting with the water so velocity obviously velocity matters a lot because uh, because they are not applicable at the small uh, speed so this is basically a uh, rough kind of uh, idea how uh, aerodynamic forces work on an automobile so in, in front if you see now in front if you see because the front portion of the car is interacting with the with the fluid first so it will have a maximum pressure and uh, it will try to stop the car so this is where uh, what you can see here the maximum pressure over here and the flow is going all around the surface on the outer surface of car and then it is leaving the car now why you what 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 are the things you are seeing on the on the back side uh, there is a drag why there is a drag, high drag on the back side basically if you if i i will try to explain about this if uh, you see the figure 1 and 2 down the figure 1 is basically when the fluid is moving at very slow speed so what will happen the particles of fluid which are okay. the particles of fluid which are over here because the velocity is very less after interacting on the surface of this uh, uh, volume or object they will they will be easily filling the space behind this when it is interacting in the front and slowly they are going behind and they are able to fill the gap so the when the speed is very low but in other case when the speed is high they don't they're they're attaching over there they're interacting over here but when they go on the back side they don't get that much time or uh, they're not that frequent to fill the gap behind that so basically what happened the interaction of fluid or the fluid is not filling this space 
now in talk in if we talk in terms of the pressure or velocity or other quantities the pressure at here will be the will be very high because all the particles are interacting over here but the pressure on the right on the back side will be less because the the particles are not able to fill the space or they are not able to uh, generate the high pressure over there so we'll have a pressure uh, lack of pressure or we can say vacuum over there so this is what you see over here the let me go into the okay so now here we see the pressure is high because there is a stagnant uh, stagnation pressure because it is trying to stop the vacuum so the particles will directly come and hit the car and they will stop now if you go to the point b the velocity will be low little bit low and the pressure will be little high because of the curvature of the vehicle now if you see on the back side the pressure are low but the velocities are high this is basically comes from you know bernoulli's equation this is what i was explaining because now the speed is high and on the back side of car these particles or the air particles they are not able to fill the gap frequent so this is what is called a vacuum we can say or low pressure or suction now we know from the bernoulli's equation again uh the pressure the you know the the vehicle or the object move or the flow is governed from high pressure to low pressure now the vehicle is traveling from right to left but with the bernoulli's equation the low pressure and high pressure the vehicle this pressure low pressure will try to suck the air or pull the air on the back side so there are two forces now one is the force from the engine or from the car which you are driving is pushing the vehicle to the front from left to right from right to left sorry another force which is the low pressure force which is trying to suck the vehicle or pull the vehicle on back side which is uh, going from high pressure to low pressure so this is what called the flow separation when uh, you know the particles on the back side they're not able to fill the gap and this is the low pressure area we call we call it we can also call as a section Uh, or the we can also call as a draft zone now let's go into the you know the vehicle development process and see how you know the things work so basically uh, now we are going into the industry part uh, we'll see how the things uh, you know uh, decided so uh, the first line says very clear there are very less vehicle which are designed from the clean paper uh if we see a new model of vehicle you know we are very amazed uh, we are very much uh, you know uh, uh get thrilled that this model is very new but it's not like that if you talk about the global companies like jeep chrysler and other companies which so what what they do is uh, for the new development for example i'll take example of jeep compass which is uh, you know launched in india few years back that jeep compass is already available in lot of countries all over the world they what they have done is just to uh, you know uh, because they are going to launch into the india so they will try to follow the regulations they will uh, basically it is kind of localization of vehicle if you are going to launch in india so the design and everything is already available all over the world so it's not a clean paper design very and and let me tell you there are very very less vehicles which are actually designed from the zero uh, level that everything because it cost a lot and it it cost a lot it uh, it cost a lot of time it cost a lot of engineers it cost so much and uh, it you know uh, the trend of automobile market is like yeah, after every 6 month a company is launching a new vehicle so you cannot uh, you cannot bear that kind of price so basically what is happening is uh, you borrow a part from say for example you want to uh, you have already have one model now you want to upgrade it so what you will do is you will carry the parts which are from the existing model and you will try to change some of the things into the car say for example uh, you take a example of maruti shift which was launched 10 15 years back and now we have seen the version 2 or version 3 of that so what they do is everything is ex existing is same only the minor changes for example the little bit of uh, the hvac system and other things they will try to see they will change the profile now they will run or my profile as a my profile or my work profile from my department we will run a basic check of what we do so uh, so uh, so uh, aerothermal simulation will do from from our perspective whether the engine exhaust and everything is good or not so uh, everything what you see is 
till now uh, before launching or before finalizing they will keep on doing until unless the new match is found which is uh, very much feasible for the uh, you know the concept and it is meeting the target it is all the components they are in the you know the green zone no no none of the component is heating too much or simply uh you try to assemble a vehicle from uh from uh, taking borrowing the other parts uh, from the other vehicle and you try to figure out or improve until you know your target or the uh, concept phase is done once that is done then we go for the pre production pre production is also only for the pilot vehicles uh they are not going for the full production they will because these are the virtual steps so the difference in the virtual step in the real reality is uh, too much because uh, when you are when we are running the cfd software when we are running virtually we have a lot of assumptions uh, so, but when you take out the vehicle on the road the reality is totally different or similar but but there are still lot of gaps so now if uh, for the prototype vehicles you go into the field and if you check if there is a, some problem then again we'll go to the virtual step and we'll try to find if there is any correlation like we were able to figure out in the virtual steps or not if yes then why it was uh, ignored or uh, how we were not able to find that out now the micros uh, this is the this is the kind of uh, 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 i would say the area where you have where engineers have to think a lot about because uh, the drag from the upper body is approximately this much and the under body this much so now uh, if you want to change anything into the vehicle you have to compromise uh, not just compromise but you have to think a lot because uh, uh, you know uh, the drag should not increase or uh, the profiling should not increase uh, you know change underbody parts you cannot change them because uh, whatever is exposed into the air it, it's there so now we have to work on these three fields considering the drag should be less and everything should be fine so the development is based on these things uh, and uh, the uh, sorry uh, yeah so we have to think about the challenges also uh, i'll be covering in uh, another slide what are the challenges we are facing when we you know when we try to develop the vehicle so uh, in this uh, the current side we see uh, that we have to figure out the drag on any portion of this should not you know increase or decrease much because this is going to put a direct impact on uh, maybe the the handling vehicle you know the handling the stability or uh, maybe the fuel consumption and in total if you see you remember we talked in uh, the previous slide that the drag forces after you know uh, at certain speed it it goes it goes really high and it is we consider after that so this is the point where you know you can see the drag forces here they are going very high and uh, the tire and chassis losses or the drag from the tire and chassis they are almost same because you cannot change the tire what you what you can do in the tire i mean uh, they are round so round you cannot do anything they, you cannot decrease the thickness because you need attraction also now this is the part from where we have to think a lot so uh, yeah so if we go into the aerodynamic detail uh, see the simple thing is i want to cool down the engine when it is when the vehicle is running okay so we have lot of underbody parts uh, uh, sorry under road and underbody parts i want to cool down the engine is exhaust the simple thing is allow as much as air possible to go into the under road and underbody no under body we cannot we cannot have much control but under hood if we allow lot of airs to go it will create a lot of drag so and nowadays you see the engine packings are very sophisticated you will not see very much you know the components which are uh, very much exposed to the air. the packing will be very compact and very complex so you cannot just allow you know the maximum air to go inside because that is that is going to increase the uh, the drag first thing second thing is it can choke the air in the underhood also means the air if you allow lot of airs to go it, the possibility is that the air which is already there might not be able to leave so it will increase the local temperature of the underhood parts or locally it will increase the temperature because the air which you are supplying is not go, uh, is not uh, is not going out basically it is just accumulating over there so we have to optimize the front end which is the grill 
of the vehicle or the front end of the vehicle to allow only that much of air which is cooling down the parts uh, what is required temperature and it is leaving also you have to design such way that it should leave also the underwood design should be like that that air should not have very much restrictions underbody obviously we, we don't have very much control into that but uh, yeah underbody also we try to you know put the belly pants or you know try to cover uh, the open uh, uh, parts I'll, i'll show you into into the next slide so this is this comes from the aerothermal uh, you know the part that you cannot allow lot of air to go but you need at least that much of air which should go inside cool down the parts and leave properly so that is a challenge of the design of front end you can say or you can say the uh the underbody but there are impacts on uh, you know uh, the things what what we were explaining in the in the previous section so you have to think about the nvh which is noise vibration and harshness if you allow a lot of air to go it might create you know a lot of noise also you have to cool down the brakes you have, there is a wind noise there is a vibration there is a cross wind fuel consumption headlight cooling instability so uh when we are designing or developing these things these are the challenges what we look around because they comes in the reality when we are driving a vehicle into the road these are the challenges we actually face so we have to optimize the design which is basically compromising with all the sides or uh, it could be in the other way uh, we can say uh, optimize with uh, for the for the best performance but above all everything above all this is the thing which actually you know matters a lot 90% or 99% of people they buy cars just by their looks they don't care about what is the type of engine you know how the engine is cooling how you know 80 or 90% people doesn't even know what are the what is you know the coolant what you are putting into the radiator what is the grade what is the color or uh, you know what is the quality of that so those are the things we the customer don't care the customer care basically what is you know how it looks Uh, how gorgeous or how you know the smart or bulk or hunk your vehicle is but as an engineer you have to think million things about that this is kind of the output which is just you know shiny and glimsy but as an engineer we have to think about what are the things behind and everything should go perfect so basically why uh, we need the virtual simulation why we need the you know software we know every uh, very well that we cannot you know the see here so it's it's really uh, kind of challenging or amazing when you have to analyze something which you ca- you can't see and the flow of air or the interaction is it's very rapid it's it, you cannot predict basically what we do in the software is is very limited uh, we we don't do it uh, you know uh, properly and in reality if we do it will take uh, i mean lot of time and maybe we won't be able to conclude anything so why we do the cfd analysis because in reality you cannot make n number of prototypes to you know so yeah uh, and then uh, we have a limitation of real time testing you know the development cost and testing uh, we have to do a lot of time so we cannot you know just start doing you know the physical testing you know build a vehicle and start testing we cannot do that and obviously the cost of testing is a lot it it costs a lot it costs a lot you have a petrol you have a diesel you have you know the person who need to drive a car and you have to set up a vehicle again there is disturbance sir your lo- we are losing a voice in between uh, i have good network i don't know why uh, now is it okay uh, so yeah and reliability of testing data because when we uh, the virtual simulation we do we have all you know almost always the same conditions we can put because the virtual simulation but in reality uh, the you know the conditions are changing one day it's too humid, humid. Uh, one day it's windy one day it's not windy so those are the things uh, you know you cannot rely on the results also so uh, these analytical simulations what we do in cfd uh, they are nowhere close to the you know the real uh, reality i would say that's the that's a kind of bitter truth because in cfd we have a lot of assumptions but we try to predict like for example if you tr- if you want to find a d- real drag on the car with the real setup and all you will it's not possible in fact you can only find the drag of force on the car in the virtual simulation or you can say the drag coefficient but in reality if you go and try to find a drag force on the car 
it's impossible to find because you have to cover the whole car with the sensor which will you know sense the pressure drag and it's impossible you cannot put the you know the million of uh, million of sensors over that so yeah these these softwares uh, they help us to predict actually they help us whether we should go for the design or not then if you go for the model complexity you know the heat exchanger and the body under root components why because there are some places where the human you know reach is not possible if you try to test the engine temperature during running condition you cannot just you know remove the hood of car and you can sit with a you know temperature probe and try to you know find the temperature of car it's not possible even if you try to put the temperature probe and uh, you take the uh, temperature out there from the sensor it will give you a different Again, okay, sorry to interrupt you again. There are some students in between. Like uh, we are using your wife in between. Okay, I am sitting next to my router, so uh, <laughs> I mean okay. it's not just one, even one meter away from me. Okay, uh, I'll now also it got disrupted. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, then design alternatives uh, because we are doing it virtually. So if there is an issue in a simulation, you know, quickly within a minute we can change the design trend for the simulation. And data analytics, obviously, because uh, every time you want to go with a, uh, like, for example, you want to see the pressure variation, you want to see the, you know, uh, the design experiment optimizations, everything. So that's where the CFD actually helps. That's where the virtual simulation actually helps. And it saves a lot of cost for, uh, you know, the development of vehicle. And yeah, the analytical simulation, if you see, uh, they, they are first, uh, when we are in concept phase, we don't have any physical model until less. It is finalized as we have explained, you know, on the previous slide. Now let's, you know, see the some industrial examples how they look like. So uh, this is a typical example of this vehicle. What you are seeing is basically a, a Tata Safari Desert Storm. Uh, uh, this is a SUV. We know uh, so when it is interacting with the, the basically uh, with the with the help of CUD, what you try to understand is. In the on the right side figure, if you see, that's how the flow is interacting with the vehicle. This is a transient flow. This is not a steady state flow. In fact, so if you see near the tires, there are a lot of you know the hodgepodge. There is a lot of physics, and the flow is going behind that. So in previous slide, we see because uh, there is you know behind the car there is a draft zone or low pressure area. That low pressure area it just doesn't you know suck the vehicle on the backside, but it also suck the uh, the air or uh, dust soil near around the vehicle. So now on the left hand, if you see before the testing, the vehicle on the figure, you know, the first one, the upper one, everything was clean. But because of that, uh, you know, the draft zone or the low pressure area, the windscreen, the rear windscreen is getting dirty. So now next time, if you see if there is a wiper on the back side of car, you can understand it has a good effect of the draft zone or it is going to suck a lot of dust on the rear windscreen. That is the only purpose because see, SUV, we, you cannot modify because SUV is a category of vehicle and you cannot change the back profile. That is the category. I mean, you, you cannot compromise with that, but you have to overcome with the solution uh, so that, you know, the rear windscreen should be clean. Now, what, what you try to do is you put a solution as a, uh, you know, the rear wiper, which is going to clean the vehicle. But this is a uh, this is a case uh, where we see yeah there is a lot of uh, you know the draft zone there is a lot of low pressure over there underhood cooling uh, yeah so you can see uh, you know the velocity profiles or velocity streamlines they are going inside the engine as we were talking about in the previous slide this is basically a kind of CFD simulation and you see there are the flow is going inside and how it is you know the cooling the underhood parts and it is leaving the vehicle. Now, if, if this is very complex or there is a, you know, local uh, kind of eddies or air is stuck or choking the, uh, you know, under hood, it won't be able to leave the vehicle properly. So the local area, the local, sorry, the local temperature of the part around the road will increase a lot. So now if you, if you see where we, where are the challenges or you see where, you know, your, uh, the skills are, they are tested. So or when we we are designing the vehicle you know how how you have to compromise because under underbody if you see we have uh, this is the exhaust basically what you are seeing now these two there are two pipes of exhaust so the exhaust temperature is very high somewhere around 800 700 uh, so we see there are a lot of you know the open air components all over there and there are a lot of gaps over here 
if you see here here and these parts all these parts so one way we, this is exposed to the air you know uh, this is a perfect example like the cooling is very efficient but now on the other side if you see there are a lot of you know the open parts which are going to create a lot of drag so again you have to compromise either you get a drag or uh, what do you want like you want to cool down the uh, parts or uh, you want less drag but but uh, on these kind of situations we always give priority to the thermal parts or the thermal side because if you're if if you talk about india uh, and, and if you are daily commuter to office you're not going into the speed of you know 1 120 or 130 uh, you might not touch so uh, basically the drag is not going to play the major role you might be driving just 40 50 or maybe 60 km per hour so if the drag of the vehicle is fine is is more it's fine it's not going to play any major role but if if the thermal if the vehicle has a thermal issue for example if the engine is going to heat up or some part is going to melt so nobody wants to you know uh, park your vehicle on the side of road and you know you want to cool down the you know uh, the engine that is that is very old uh, you know on the example but yeah you you don't want any kind of thermal uh, troubles into that you see for example because of uh, heat some harness is you know going to melt or it is what if you know the ecu system is getting heated up and it does it does something so the thermal is always the priority because it is related to a lot of things in the vehicle the functionality of vehicle drag if somewhere it is we can compromise it's fine drag is basically major when we go for the racing cars or when we see for say for example the audis or the people who don't care about the cost so what we try next is cover all the underbody parts but again we have to check for the thermal simulations which have to check the thermal part so what what in this place what has been done let me show again so what you see now here is they have covered the we have in uh, exhaust system exposed but what they have done is they have provided the heat shields over there now if see throughout this we have a heat shield so the heat shields are basically you know kind of aluminum shields or uh, some metal sheet uh, you know merged with the with the fibers Uh, uh fiber you know composites so what it will try to do is it will try to you know keep the heat uh, and it will not allow to pass so uh, this is one way of you know the reducing the drag of underbody and also it effectively cooling down the exhaust system but yeah this is going to increase a lot of cost this is going to increase a lot of weight of the vehicle also because whatever part you are going to put on the vehicle each and every part have their own importance even if you are increasing you know uh 55 gra 5 kg or 10 kg of uh, the weight in the vehicle it, it cost a lot now whatever we have seen that was the existing that was what is existing so far nowadays but we know there are a lot of electric vehicles are coming and uh, there is a lot of development the soon you know the petrol and diesel engines will be gone so what is going to happen from the aerothermal and aerodynamic point of view what is going to happen to my future what what i am going to do is when there is no underbody components uh, for example mean that means there is no exhaust okay there is no engine because uh, there is no requirement there is no exhaust again uh, there is no transmission uh, because uh, for the electric vehicle you are going to put the motors on the uh, on the you know the tires or you can have you know the other uh, kind of mechanical or some kind of electrical uh, assembly and there is no no fuel tank if there is no engine no exhaust and why would you need a fuel tank so what is the future now so when we when we talk uh, what is going to happen now so basically directly you can say the engine noise will be gone the engine vibration and all those things will be gone the main impact will be to make the vehicle more efficient from the aerodynamic point of view so that because you are using the bad freeze and the more restrictive force will be you know it will cost a lot for you also so and the other thing is from the thermal point of view you have to cool down the bad freeze and you have to take care of the hvac uh, system so this is where we predict that aerothermal and aerodynamic will be you know uh, doing their uh, jobs in future so yeah this is done and there is no more we can have a discussion now uh, you guys can have uh, uh, questions Okay, sir. Uh, so we'll be taking questions now. Uh, yeah. So where I can see that Q A. Uh, there is one question, sir. Uh, what is the difference between drag and lift, and 
what is the main role in mag of mag magnus effect in this case see drag is basically which actually restrict the movement of vehicle okay which is not allowing you to go basically lift is something which you know uh, which is uh, try to push your vehicle see i'll give you the example of this in terms of comparing automobile and the aeroplane uh, see automobile you want your uh, car to be on the ground for the maximum traction so that you can stay on the ground and stable but in case of aircraft you don't have to stay on the ground you have to fly and for the flying you need lift lift means uh, you have to you know take off your vehicle so how it happens basically if we again talk about the bernoulli's principle when the aircraft flies the pressure on the upper side of aircraft is low and the down is high so that's how it gets stuck and it goes up but in case of automobile it's totally different uh, automobile it's uh, what do you say is the we want downward forces so we use spoilers and spoilers are basically your reverse airfoil which creates a downward force okay so drag is basically which try to restrict the motion and lift is which you, you know uh, helps to uh, you know the uh, go uh, for the uh, i mean try to you know fly now in terms of automobile again you don't want lift for automobile you want stability drag will work on aer uh, aeroplane also and the automobile also is it okay Yes, sir. His next part was uh, Magnus effect. Uh, I'm sorry, I I cannot, I don't recall what is Magnus Magnus effect. So, what you can you elaborate your question a little bit more? Okay. Uh, by the time we'll take another question. Uh, yeah. this means automobile companies do not work on R and D for design much. They do. <laughs> That's what I was saying. When you localize, you know, the part. Say, for example, you take an example of Mahindra. Okay, so Mahindra is an Indian company. Now, if you take example of the recent vehicle XUV 500 and XUV 300. Okay, uh, they are kind of, uh, you know, the same vehicle. The version is, you know, different. So when you launch another version, that's where you have to work on, you know, the R and D of design. And design of everything it's not just one thing you know if you if you actually compare the xuv 500 and xuv 300 it's kind of scaled 1.5 percent down or uh, maybe uh, some some proportionate but it's not like you don't work on design we work on design i mean not me but uh, yeah the industry they work on design because uh, for the certification when you have to launch a vehicle into the india or any country you have to get a certification for each and every part of vehicle uh, so you have to test also so and for the testing you need design so you have to you know uh, test each and everything the, the R&D what you have to do is you uh, you know you uh, check the design you check the simulations and then you go for the pre-production and the testing also yeah we do but what I was giving previous example was uh, was a company which are working the globally but but now yeah uh, it, it if you if you see uh, if you want to see the other examples uh, uh, why they don't work on you know the design very much uh, talk about swift maruti swift and maruti baleno uh, they have kind of same same platform uh, kind of same engine same chassis only the outer body a, which is you know uh, has been developed so yeah you are working on the design but not on the clean paper because it will cost a lot yeah okay. Okay, so, so next question, can downforce be considered as a drag? Downforce can be considered as a drag, but see the drag, uh, if you talk, uh, I don't know whether you guys are uh, aware of Renault Summer or not, but if we go for the speed, so for example, uh, uh, what was the question? Sorry, uh, I, I, I just forgot. Can drag can be uh, considered as? Downforce, downforce can be considered as drag. Uh, if we, I, I guess this uh, question might be related to the racing cars where you know the spoilers are uh, related. Yeah, but if you if you go for the high speed cars, which are traveling at a speed of 300, you know, uh, kilometers per hour, if you go for the F1 racing, you need more stability at the high speed. There, you are not caring much about the drag because after one point, uh, you know, the drag will kind of uh, it's not increasing, it's not decreasing. If, if you want to compare the drag at 250 km per hour and 300 km per hour, it won't make much difference. 
because it's it's kind of actually the it's it's a uh, optimum level you can say it's not varying it's just a straight line so uh, and I, in that cases in those cases you want the maximum stability of car because at the high speed controlling the car is very you know dangerous or you need the maximum uh, so yeah drag those what you can say is how you you know the take the advantage of drag or you see the positive way of those drag is to use as a maximum forces or downward forces which will help your car to stay on the ground okay uh, one interesting question here is asked uh, for cfd analysis are you modeling each component or just simplified Modeling. No, <laughs> we model. See, uh, what I do in my profile is, uh, I don't care about the upper body when I am doing the thermal analysis. I don't care about the cockpit or the upper shape of vehicle. Okay, uh, approximately uh, underhood and underbody and the floor we consider mostly for the uh, thermal analysis, excluding wheels and hub because those are very very far away from the exhaust. Uh, and the engine so approximately if you cover all the components they come approximately around 500 to 600 components and maybe more we neglect a lot of components also because which are you know uh, they are far away from the exhaust it's not going to affect we try to simplify it and yes for each 500 component we do modeling we do meshing uh, and we try to analyze uh, you know what is the temperature and if there is an issue, we try to give suggestions also, like these are the modifications or design changes you can do. We have to do, we have to do for each and components. We cannot neglect because each and every component of, uh, you know, automobile has its own importance. You, you, even if you're putting a screw, it has importance. It has a meaning, it has a logic. Okay. Uh, next question, can we reduce the drag of a car such as SUVs by using spoilers and what such components can reduce the drag? Uh, see SUV itself if you say uh, see the drag in if if we you know let's categorize you know the vehicle automobiles okay so we have hatchback we have sedan and then we have SUVs so SUVs are kind of version of hatchback which has more ground clearance or which are more bulky in fact so the particular category has a drag like your SUV uh, like you know uh, as I told you, you cannot compromise with the design or the looks because it has to carry. Now, what you try to do is put on some, uh, you know, the additional which additional components or add-ons which can try to reduce the drag. But putting a spoiler on a SUV, it might not be good. Let me show you. Uh, let me show. Let me go back to the slide where we were. Now, if you see here, you guys are still able to see my screen, right? So now if you see, this is a kind of a spoiler, we call it as lip spoiler, okay. So, but still if you see, you have cre we have created a spoiler, we have kept a spoiler over here, but still there is some dust. So the particular category, you cannot do anything, you have to compromise, there is no other way. The minimum drag if you want to feel is that goes on the sedan because it has low ground clearance and the body is streamlined, even the hatchback for also it will be more truck it will be for more so the it depends totally on the particular you know the category and if you want to optimize the drag uh, you have to think a lot about it i mean you have to you can put the diffusers uh, you can uh, spoilers i don't think uh, spoilers because uh, there is already uh, you know a lot of uh, the back uh, pressure or the lot of uh, turbulence behind the vehicle so i don't think it's going to help uh, one more interesting question I came across is uh, what is the effect of inclination of vehicles like lower pressure in front wheel and higher pressure in rear wheels, especially what in the case of can you can you come again, Prakar? Yes. Uh, the student is asking what is the effect of the inclination of vehicles? If mm -hmm. we have lower pressure in the front vehicles and higher pressure in the rear vehicles, does that make any changes? Especially Are you talking the about the height, like the front uh, should be you not know, inclined yes, yes, towards yes. first? Uh, no, uh, it might, but then it will affect the vehicle dynamics because at the speed of 80, 90, when you will, you know, the brake suddenly, uh, it's uh, basically uh, the yawn motion will start when you, when you brake the vehicle, when you start braking, uh, you know, uh, uh, breaking down, uh, not breaking down, I mean, the slowing down the vehicle. So, uh, the handling, the vehicle handling or the, that should be good. But yeah, it's it's a kind of uh, uh, you know 
kind of it can give advantage on the reduction of drag but it's not uh, you know i cannot uh, just say yeah it is true but you have to see about the vehicle handling also how it is going to happen we have already so much weight in you know from the underhood so if we already if, if you have you might have seen you know honda city and uh, honda jazz kind of vehicles we have they have a kind of front inclination but not too much okay so there are a lot more questions but i guess due to time constraint we cannot take all the questions right now so uh, i will now request our director sir dr sn sigara uh, to uh, say some few words vote of thanks yeah thank you very much uh, avinash chandra sir for uh, really a uh, very good uh, talk especially in terms of you know the experience coming from the industry was very very helpful and uh, a few things i just wanted to make a little clear, clear for the students who ask some questions regarding magnus effect basically magnus effect comes into picture when there is a rotating body moving in the air something like you kick a football and the football actually you know keeps rotating in the air and it creates different types of you know the lift and drag and sometime you would have seen that uh, the ball kicked in one direction because of the spin and also the complex in, uh, aerodynamic effect it takes a different turn and then enters into the goal this basically comes under the magnus effect and this effect might be there with a rotating wheel uh, but problem with the rotating wheel in the vehicles are they are completely you know enclosed with the hoods i mean in, under the chassis and all that so the magnus effect is not much seen and a few things i mean with my own experience i just want to make sure for the students the questions regarding the drag and lift like how are they linked together there is a complex uh, creation if you look at the kujoski theorem uh the drag is actually created with the lift and sometimes the lift is created with the drag i think people should study mathematics for to understand that there are other thermal uh, considerations which people should also see with the magnus effect uh, basically the cooling of the brake shoes and uh, uh, there is uh, i think avinash chandra will go with me there are actually air passages which are actually made in the underwood to guide the air through these rotating wheels at the shoes yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, they will be you know finding uh, a way actually to cool it down yeah. and, and yes, some you, yes sir and usually some questions which people ask about spoiler sometimes these students actually uh, confuse the spoiler with the wing uh, many a time you know for the cars which are actually lifting off because of very high speed and also the lift is being created because of the uh, shape of the body you need to actually press it hard again to the ground so that you will have the traction else traction will not be there so they use a wing and uh, these types of wings are usually seen in the sports cars whereas the spoilers are commonly used actually to spoil the laminar flow and make it little turbulent to uh, disturb the low pressure at the back to certain extent yes spoiler do reduce drag these are my observations and uh, i think uh, avinash chandra will go with me on these yes sir absolutely sir <laughs> and uh, thank you very much sir for coming all the way and then giving your uh, uh, expert lecture here and i i am thankful to dr prakash jindal who is following it up from so many days about you know having an industry person on board and also to deliver these types of lectures mm -hmm.